Hi. You may have heard of the recent flooding in Houston, Texas, after Tropical Storm Imelda dumped over 40 inches of rain in some areas. In the northern part of Kingwood, Elm Grove, a development by Perry Homes has become our worst nightmare. As you can see here, this drainage ditch, called Taylor Gully, is how our neighborhood drains our excess rainwater. If we go back in time, we can see that the Taylor Gully was constructed back in 1978, over 40 years ago. You can see the depth of the gully and even some concrete areas uh, near Mills Branch Road. As we go forward, we can see that in 1989, more of Elm Grove was constructed and the gully. For 30 years, we haven't had any notable problems. Elm Grove has been able to survive Allison, Ike, Harvey, 2016 tax day floods, and all other recent floods without seeing more than just localized street flooding. Now, as we go forward into 2019, Perry Homes recently clear-cut 92 acres across the county line directly northwest of our neighborhood. All of this water must now be collected and channeled into our existing drainage system, the Taylor Gully. Last May, this land had been clear-cut, but there had not yet been any retention ponds installed to hold excess water. Water quickly went downhill towards the streets here, immediately inundating these homes with as much as three feet of water. It is now September. From the photo I'm putting on screen, we can see that more retention ponds have been completed, but not all of the ones that are planned. On September 19th, Imelda put Perry's construction to the test. Water quickly overflowed the sides of the retention pond, inundating these same homes that flooded in May. As outraged as I can be, I investigated the area and now ask you, dear viewer, to determine why this happened. You know, Perry Homes has come out and they've, they've built what they what the county and Houston have approved, so to speak, and you know, this, this doesn't seem right. Alright, so we're standing here at the retention pond from the new Perry Homes development and the border where we meet Elm Grove. As you can see, I'm standing on the ridge here, more or less, the, of the detention pond. And then if it were to overflow, it goes into this small channel here. Now, this channel, they've installed some drain piping, but unfortunately that just leads back to the retention pond. So when the retention pond overflows, it drains to the retention pond. Obviously, this isn't going to drain very much water. Right now, it's built up. So all of this water is collected and brought back down towards the homes that flooded, as well as into this pipe. Now, what do you think? Do you think that this pipe should lead back to the retention pond? Or that the overflow area should lead downstream towards the drain? I had to stop riding my bicycle, it got so rough here. Um, this is the area where there was the most washout. Um, you can see that the sand berm was uh, even damaged from the amount of washout and all of the silt fencing has been pushed over. So this indicates that this channel um, filled up and then overflowed. So instead of it directing water downstream towards Taylor Gully where the drain is, it directed it back and towards these homes. Who do you think is responsible for this water? So here we are um, at the mouth of the Taylor Gully. And uh, if you notice something interesting, all of the silt fences are standing up right here. There's no water overflow right here. It was only down here by the homes. The water could have been channeled here into the gully. This funnel could have continued 
and funnel directly into the gully as an overflow emergency channel. I'm not sure why this has not been done. This drain drains here to the gully. So there's many reports the water did not come up out of the banks of the gully while all of the homes flooded here. So the only way that could have happened is because this retention pond overflowed. Is once this overflows, this this needs to be not going back into the overflowing retention pond. Like I said, this water needs to be going down into Taylor Gully, and you know, avoiding all of these houses over here. So we've got to get this water into Taylor Gully, and if if this structure over here is not moving it, we've got to improve this structure. And then we've got to go down downstream and we've got to improve that bridge as well. So here we go. You can see it flowing around the corner. And how much lower it is. So also what you can see here is the water coming off of the surface of the neighborhood and it's actually going backwards in reverse uh, into the gully uh, which then has to go through that same concrete culvert where the clean elm grove section 3 water comes in and mixes with the water coming out from this is Taylor Gully now looking west towards the new development. So this is where they have uh, done all of the work to try and improve the drainage. And as we can see, the lighter color, the silty water coming from that new drain, the new subdivision is uh, mixing with the clean water from the older subdivision right here. A few homes upstream, we see that around 9 a.m. the river was contained by the bank. At 9.55 it was approaching the edges, and then around 10.17 uh, it had completely engulfed the bank just west of the bridge. So the bridge, again, it's restricting the flow. As you can see down further, uh, there's a very open bridge, whereas this bridge is very closed off and restricted, only having the two passageways. Um, as here you can see, the water was flowing over top of the bridge, and then all of the debris was left after the restriction of flow. Hey, so this was my first time putting something like this together. Uh, I hope it was informative. Uh, I hope you enjoyed, and I hope we can really get something done about this, because obviously, as you can see, this is just, this is not working. So, hey, uh, Elm Grove, you all have a great day.